Percy Jackson focuses on gods and goddesses, and gods and goddesses have been known to push the boundaries of dating and marrying within the family. This has led to a ton of weird connections when looking at their family trees, and this is very much apparent even in Rick Riordan's series. When breaking all of their families down, it's apparent that almost every character in the series is related, which is just wild. I made a similar video to this one about how all Harry Potter characters are related, which you guys clearly seem to like, so we're gonna do something similar here in this video. I spent several days figuring this tree out and actually creating it, and I'm pretty proud of the final product, and I'm excited to share it with you guys in this video. Now just to be clear, I'm going by the Percy Jackson universe, which can sometimes be different from real mythology, so just keep that in mind, I'm going by the world that Rick Riordan created. Also, I'm gonna try my best with pronunciations. I tried to look up how to pronounce everything, but there are several ways to say each name depending on what time period and what culture it is. Erebos. Erebos. So, go easy on me, I'm gonna try my best. If you enjoy this video, please hit the like button to help with the algorithm. It will greatly help the channel so I can make more fun videos like this one. But anyway, let's get into it. Every character begins with chaos, a shapeless void. Before the sea, lands, and sky, all there was was chaos. Eventually, some chaos matter collected to form what were basically his children. Nyx, the goddess of the night, Erebus, the god of darkness, Tartarus, the pit of evil, Pontus, the sea, Gia, the earth, Thalassa, the female goddess of the sea, and Oranos, the sky. Right away, we have some family-on-family -family action, as Erebos and Nyx get together and have three children, Hecate, Nemesis, and Hypnos. Hecate connects us to our first demigod, Alabaster C. Torrington, a demigod who joined Kronos in the original series, as well as his sister, Lou Ellen Blackstone, who was the head counselor of the Hecate cabin, and of course, Josephine, or Joe, a retired hunter of Artemis from the Trials of Apollo series. Then, Hecate's sister Nemesis connects Ethan Nakamura, a very prominent supporter of Kronos with a bit of a redemption right before the end. And Nemesis and Hecate's brother Hypnos connects us to Clovis, the head of the Hypnos cabin at Camp Half-Blood. Also, I'll take this moment to point out that I made the gods blue and demigods red. Going back up to Chaos's kids, Thalassa and her brother Oranos got married and had Aphrodite, the goddess of beauty, which connects us to many key members in Riordan's series. Selena Beauregard, who of course had a tragic end in The Last Olympian, Drew Tanaka, the bully and former head of the Aphrodite cabin before Piper came along, Michael Kahale, a Roman demigod, Piper McLean, the first demigod we've seen so far that was part of the Prophecy of Seven, and Mitchell and Lacey, two Camp Half-Blood campers with smaller roles in the Heroes of Olympus series. Going back to Oranos, he not only married his sister Thalassa, but also his sister Gia, and together they had five kids. Before we go over those five kids though, Gia also got together with her brother Pontus, and they had Thaumas. Thaumas married Electra, and together they had Iris, the goddess of the rainbow, and Iris connects us to the demigod Butch Walker, the head counselor of the Iris cabin at Camp Half-Blood. And now going back to Oranos and Gia's five kids, they had Tethys, Oceanus, Iapetus, aka Bob, Rhea, and Kronos. First off, Kronos connects Chiron, who was sired by the Titan King. Then, the brother and sister Tethys and Oceanus had a daughter named Clymene, and Clymene ended up marrying her mother and father's brother, otherwise known as her uncle, Iapetus. Together, Clymene and Iapetus had the titan Atlas, who was a main villain in the third Percy Jackson book, and who was known for holding the sky up as punishment. Atlas then connects us to the demigod Zoe Nightshade, a member of the Hunters of Artemis, and who was actually killed by her own father Atlas in the Titan's Curse. And Atlas also connects us to his daughter Calypso, the goddess that was trapped on the island Ogygia, and who Leo Valdez would later fall in love with. Going back to Atlas' aunts and uncles, Rhea and Kronos got together, and their marriage is huge. Kronos, the main villain in the original Percy Jackson books, had six kids with the Titan Rhea. Hestia, goddess of the hearth, Demeter, goddess of agriculture, Hades, the god of the underworld, Poseidon, the god of the sea, Hera, who would later be the queen of the gods, and Zeus, who would later be the king of the gods. Looking at just them, this connects many demigods in the series, as Demeter is the mother of Laterces from the Trials of Apollo, Katie Gardner, a notable participant in the Battle of Manhattan, Miranda Gardner, who took Katie's spot as the head counselor of the Demeter Cabin, Meg McCaffrey from the Trials of Apollo, and the Roman demigod Layla. 
Then, Demeter's brother Hades connects us to Nico and Bianca D'Angelo, as well as Hazel Levesque, the second demigod we've seen so far that was part of the Prophecy of Seven, who technically was born to Pluto, but that's just the Roman version of Hades, so I'm putting Hazel under Hades. Then, going back to the siblings, Poseidon connects us to Percy Jackson, another member of the Prophecy of Seven, as well as his Cyclops brother Tyson. Then, Zeus connects us to Thalia and Jason Grace, Thalia being a loyal member of the Hunters of Artemis, and Jason, like Percy and Hazel, being part of the Prophecy of Seven. Then, looking throughout these siblings, we have quite a bit of family-on-family -family action again, as Hera and Zeus got married and together had three kids, Ares, the god of war, Enyo, who is the Greek form of Bologna, and Hebe, the goddess of youthfulness. Enyo, or Bologna, connects us to her daughters Hilla and Reina Ramirez Arleano. Looking at Hebe, she connects her demigod son, Paolo Montez, from the Trials of Apollo series. And then looking at Ares, he connects us to Clarice LaRue, a fan favorite, Sherman Yang, who took Clarice's spot as head counselor during the Trials of Apollo, Mark, a smaller character part of the Ares cabin, and Frank Zhang, another demigod part of the Prophecy of Seven. Technically, Frank's dad is Mars, but again, Mars is just the Roman version of Ares. Ares' mother, Hera, also had a son named Hephaestus, the blacksmith god. She did this on her own, using her own godly power to impregnate herself, and Hephaestus connects us to many more demigods, including Charles Beckendorf, the head of the Hephaestus cabin until he died in the fifth book, Jake Mason, who took Charles' place as head counselor after he died, Nissa Barrera, the person who took the head counselor spot for Jake when he was injured, Leo Valdez, another member of the Prophecy of Seven, and smaller characters that were at Camp Half-Blood like Shane, Christopher, and Harley. While Zeus was married to and had many children with Hera, he also had a number of affairs that led to five more demigod children. The first one was with Leto, the goddess of motherhood, who he had the twins Apollo and Artemis with. The twins can act a ton of demigod children on their own, as Apollo had Halcyon Green, a demigod that Luke and Thalia discovered before going to Camp Half-Blood, Lee Fletcher, the former head counselor of the Apollo cabin before being killed in the Battle of the Labyrinth, Michael Yu, who took Lee's spot as head counselor when he died, Will Salas, the fan favorite who is now romantically involved with Nico D'Angelo, Austin Lake, a contributor in the Battle of Manhattan, and smaller characters like Kayla Knowles, Laurel Victor, Gracie, and Jan. And on top of all of Apollo's kids, I'm also going to add Octavian, who technically is not a child of Apollo, but sort of is at the same time, as it's said that he's the Roman legacy of Apollo, which is close enough for me. Zeus's second affair was with Maya, who was actually the daughter of Atlas, who we went over earlier. Zeus and Maya had their son Hermes, the messenger god, and Hermes connects us to quite a few demigods, including Luke Castellan, my favorite character in the series, Connor and Travis Stoll, the twins who were co-counselors for the Hermes cabin after Luke's departure, Chris Rodriguez, who of course went on to date Clarice, and Cecil Markowitz, a smaller character who resided in the Hermes cabin. Zeus's third affair was with Semele, the only mortal on this family tree. I decided not to add any of the demigods' mortal parents because it would just look confusing and very scrambled. But the reason I'm adding the mortal Semele is because her demigod child Dionysus later became a god, and he would later even be part of the Twelve Olympians. Dionysus connects us to a few smaller demigods like Castor and Pollux, both of whom were Greek demigods at Camp Half-Blood, and Dakota, a Roman demigod at Camp Jupiter. Then, like Octavian, Emmy from the Trials of Apollo series isn't technically the daughter of Dionysus, but is a legacy of him, so like Octavian, I'll count that one as well. And then Zeus's fourth affair was with Metis, who we had Athena, the goddess of wisdom and warfare with. Athena connects two more demigod children, Annabeth Chase, the final demigod part of the Prophecy of Seven, and Malcolm Pace, who took Annabeth's place as head counselor for the Athena cabin while she was gone. Looking at all of this, I was able to connect a whopping 103 characters, which is just wild. The only major characters we couldn't really get were non-demigods like Grover, Ella, Rachel, and a few others. Overall though, I'd say it's pretty clear that almost every character, both god and demigod, is connected in some way, and it was a lot of fun figuring it out. Again, if you enjoyed this video, please hit that like button to help with the algorithm. And if you're not already and enjoyed this video, hit that subscribe button.
Thank you so much for watching guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. You can follow me on Instagram to see more of my personal life like my cute dog Loki and some behind the scenes movie flame stuff. I also do similar content on TikTok and Twitter that I do here on this channel, so if you like what I do here, check them out. All the handles are right below me and links are in the description. Over here are my wonderful patrons. If you want to be featured on the next video plus get a few other perks, become a patron today. As always, if you liked the video, hit that like button and subscribe and look out for more great movie flame videos on the way.